Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In the study of DC circuits, students encounter a term, conductance, which is the opposite or inverse of resistance. The symbol for conductance is G, and so for this circuit, the conductance of the first resistor is G1 is equal to 1 over R1. The unit for resistance is the ohm, and historically the unit for conductance was the mo, which is ohm spelled backwards. But now the units are Siemens. Conductance is used even if you don't know it when calculating equivalent parallel resistances. Since conductance is the reciprocal of resistance, each 1 over R term is actually a conductance. And in fact, to get total conductance for parallel resistances, you could just add the conductances of the individual resistors. The term resistance denotes the amount of opposition to flowing electrons in a circuit, while the conductance represents the ease by which the electrons may flow. In other words, resistance measures how much a circuit resists current, while conductance measures how easily a circuit conducts current. In AC circuits, the reactive components, inductors and capacitors, oppose the flow of electrons with respect to time, rather than with a constant, unchanging friction as resistors do. We call this time-based opposition reactance, and like resistance, we also measure it in ohms. As conductance is the complement of resistance, there is also a complementary expression of reactance called susceptance. Susceptance is the inverse or reciprocal of reactance, and like conductance, it is measured in Siemens. The symbol for susceptance is the letter B, which is unfortunately the same symbol used to represent magnetic flux density. But what can you do? There are more electrical characteristics to measure than letters in the alphabet. The terms reactance and susceptance have a certain linguistic logic to them, just like resistance and conductance do. Reactance is the measure of how much a circuit reacts against change in current over time, and susceptance is the measure of how much a circuit is susceptible to conducting a change in current. To determine the total effect of parallel connected reactances, you could convert each reactance to a susceptance, then add susceptances and take the inverse of that result. Alternatively, the total susceptance of a set of parallel reactive components is simply the sum of the individual susceptances. This is very similar to the resistance-conductance relationship in DC circuits, but there are a couple of caveats when doing this. First, the components need to be purely reactive. In other words, they need to be inductors and or capacitors. And second, you need to consider the sign of the reactance, which is determined by whether it is a capacitive reactance or inductive reactance. Capacitive reactance is negative and inductive reactance is positive. To add another level of complexity, if you have a circuit with parallel branches of resistive and reactive components connected together, their combined effects can no longer be analyzed with the scalar quantities of resistance and reactance, or conductance and susceptance. We need to use impedance to quantify the effects of mixed resistive and reactive components. Impedance is denoted by the letter Z, or Z, is measured in ohms and has a magnitude and a direction. Alternatively, we could use the reciprocal of impedance, which is admittance, and uses the symbol Y, is measured in Siemens, and also has both a magnitude and direction. As I just mentioned, both impedance and admittance have a magnitude and a direction because they are complex quantities, consisting of a real and an imaginary part. Impedance and admittance also have a certain naming logic to them. Impedance is a measure of how much alternating current is impeded in a circuit, while admittance is a measure of how much current is admitted. When doing the reciprocals of impedance or admittance, don't forget that you are doing this operation on complex numbers. So don't make silly mistakes like this. You actually need to take the reciprocal of the entire complex number. It is possible to get through a whole course on AC circuits and never actually have to use susceptance or admittance, but if you are involved in electrical engineering in any way, it is important that you know of their existence and meaning. The content for this video came from a free online open source textbook, and you can find a link to that book in the description. If you check out that site, you'll find the textbook as well as practice problems and more videos like this covering AC and DC electrical circuits, as well as electronic devices and digital electronics. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.